Looking into the autism spectrum has given us more insight into how we humans think and how our brains are wired differently. We have various ways of thinking that can be perceived as odd to neurotypicals. Looking into gender identity is no different, as various autistics prefer not to follow traditional gender labels. Recent studies have shown that there have been more cases of autistic people to be a specific gender that differs from their biological sex. This documentary asks, could there be a connection between the two? Do people believe autistics aren't capable of choosing their own identity? This may be a pretty controversial question, but to this day, autistics are still fighting for the rights to be heard. Autism, or recently named the Autistic Spectrum Disorder, is a neurological condition that has affected the mind of one person, in which is often seen as a disability. Each person's behaviour can change day to day, but to make things easier, we will use these generalised labels for examples. High functioning, also described as Asperger's Syndrome, are autistic people that can function day to day lives but may need additional assistance in order to function day to day activities. Their socialising skills may differ compared to neurotypicals, and some can lead independent lives. Low functioning, or classic autism, are those who need more care. They are less likely to function independently and struggle with instructions. Their mentality is usually perceived as much younger than their age as they grow. Some cases of autism are non-verbal, in that they are unable to, or choose not to, use verbal communication. Various people in the spectrum can be both, so using these terms isn't as ideal for everybody. Gender identity is the gender to which you identify, as opposed to the biological sex to which a person is born. These include male, female, non-binary or genderqueer or gender fluid. Gender is seen what you identify as, regardless of biology. You tend to feel what gender you are. Gender dysphoria is the feeling of distress regarding the disparity between a person's gender and sex. So what has this got to do with autism? Some studies have shown that autism and transgender have connections, but there is little evidence to back it up. So, who am I? I am Rachel and I'm also autistic. I identify as cisgender, however I am currently in the self-discovery phase this past year or so. I feel that I don't conform to the female ideals. I also feel strongly with both of these topics and I feel that it hasn't been properly explored as of yet. The first question is, do you think there is a connection to autism and gender identity? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I do think there is, but I'm not sure what kind. Yes, I do think there's a connection between the two. Obviously, this is a very non-scientific opinion, but I think it's very much related to how accepting we are of ourselves and of difference in other people. In a way, yeah, I think that being autistic means that can, can mean that a lot of us are less directly influenced by um, social constructs, and I think a lot of gender is a social construct. So I think we're more likely to be true to our internal sort of sense of gender identity. I mean, I think there is one for me because I think part of the reason I don't identify with either of the binary genders is because I don't really understand what gender is. It's kind of like, you know, you're supposed to be these things if you're a woman and these things are and when you're a man and they, neither of them really make sense to me. You know, I'm not sure if there's like a direct correlation or anything, but I do notice that there are a lot of non-binary and trans people on Twitter, especially I find, um, that are autistic as well. So that's really interesting to see. I think it's pretty clear that there is some kind of connection. It's less clear what the connection might be. Anecdotally, I think there is very clearly a link between gender identity and autism, just from the number of people I know who are gender fluid, gender queer, trans, um, very common. Um, I think there is partly, um, and that is probably the nature of neurodiversity. So um, being you know, different, I suppose, in how you think about things, I think that applies to every part of you, including any kind of gender identity that you would have. So where do we begin? What evidence is there so far? Despite growing cases of transgender autistic individuals, the study of gender identity and autism combined have been minimal. Judith Butler, for example, an author who has written books such as Gender Trouble, thinks that gender is a performance and that drag culture and performance blurs the lines of gender. An ambiguous identity could lead into more of a progressive society. 
Gender identity hasn't received as much attention until recently, as exposure on the internet has helped to give this topic a voice. The internet has been quite a good influence in that it's allowed a lot of people to talk about how they experience their gender identity and it amplifies the number of voices that we're able to hear and I think it gives people an opportunity to experiment, talk to like-minded people more easily. I think generally it's been a really good thing. I think it's been an explosion of knowledge. As much as autistic people have kind of exploded information onto the internet and we're reaching places we've never reached before, I think in terms of gender, I think it's really opened up a lot of people's eyes. I probably wouldn't realize that non-binary was even a thing. I wouldn't even like fully understand myself if the internet wasn't around, you know? Um, and there's certainly people that I can connect with. I think it definitely like more people have access to it. It depends on where you're from. So I'm from Croatia. My language doesn't even have words for non-binary. It doesn't have pronouns for non-binary people. I can't say anything in Croatian without gendering myself one way or the other. And so like most of the information I found on genders outside of literally cis man or cis woman, has been online and it's where a lot of my communities are at and also where a lot of my like autistic communities are at. A lot of these questions that people are searching for going to the internet are questions that their parents probably or the people in their lives can't answer for them. People are out there sharing and kind of explaining things. People who are you know, out there looking and seeking for help can find some help and can find some answers. And, you know, sometimes just having that solidarity in your tribe and just ha knowing that someone else has gone through something you're going through can be very helpful or life-changing or life-saving for someone. Then it can be dangerous too, because it's not always safe. The internet can be a really nasty place and it can be a really ugly place. You have to know how to protect yourself just with the ugliness that just comes from the internet in general. While exposure can be seen as a positive thing for awareness, it can also generate a lot of discourse for opposing sides. Websites like Tumblr, while great for promoting gender identity, can reveal a lot of misleading information that can be damaging for the community. There are also opposing sides that believe that gender identity is nothing more than a mental illness, even though being transgender is no longer being labelled as such in 2018. The opposing side still believe that gender is delusional, such as the bathroom bill controversy in America. These people use examples such as comparing transgender as choosing your age, or that they are a threat to the heteronormative society by being misleading. TERFs, trans exclusionary radical feminists, have a similar issue in which they believe that a trans woman is just a disguise so that men can have their rights. Recently, I gained the opportunity to interview a well known autistic advocate, Jeanette Perkis who has recently come out as non-binary. I thought this was the perfect opportunity to interview them and wanted to know their opinions while additionally uncovering the struggles of someone who has to put up with internet trolls and malicious comments daily. Oh, actually tonight, um, I just, so I went, I was feeling really, uh, my mood has been all over the place and I was feeling really low and I thought, oh, I better go do some work. That always cheers me up. So I thought, oh, I'll check, check my email, see what's up. And there's this one comment on my email, which from my YouTube clip that I put up today about coming out, I put up this, I've been doing a few different video diaries and I put up one today about misgendering and using pronouns and stuff. It's not me being judgy and saying everyone has to use my preferred pronouns, I'm going to yell at them. It wasn't that at all. It was a much more broad thing. And I had this one comment that said, F asterisk, 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 your gender. And I thought, yeah, that's not cool. So I deleted that and I blocked the user. And then I put it on Facebook just before you contacted me. <laughs> and um, then I had another, and I had all these notifications. I'm like, oh God, what's going on here? So it looks like, I don't know, but it looks like a sort of concerted trolling effort by a bunch of bigots saying, let's be horrible to the net. The problem is, not for me, I hate trolls and I get really angry with trolls. I've had a few actually lately, it's been really poor. But these ones, I just think the worst thing is if someone goes onto my page and sees that video and they're looking at it as a really positive, empowering thing and then there's all this hate there, I can't leave that there. That's not fair on other people and I think I, 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 I just really can't stand trolls. I, I yeah. don't get... Why? There's a lot more knowledge out there. I think the internet is great for getting people connected and for getting people to meet one another. But the good thing about that is that you can sort of join your community and it, it's much clearer, especially, I mean, when I was a kid, I'm 43, when I was a kid, gender options were basically binary opposites, male and female, 
and a few people were trans, but that was really, people didn't know about that in the mainstream. And then it was sexuality and people got sexuality and gender, as sadly they still do, very conflated. And they thought that, you know, gender and sexuality were the same thing, which of course they're not. And with sexuality, there were three options. There was straight, gay and bi, and that was it. So there just wasn't a lot of knowledge and understanding. It was now there is, and you meet young kids even these days who identify as non-binary or trans, and that's fantastic. At this current time, there is a constant, ongoing discourse on gender and autism. But we still see them as separate subjects. Thankfully, there are growing examples of the increasing awareness surrounding autism and gender identity. But this research could be expanded upon. People with different genders need to be given more of a platform. They need to be given the ability to speak. They need to be shouted from the rooftops, basically, because they are such an important part of autistic culture and of autistic people. I know that there's studies that focus on the gender identity of autism and such, but when it's studies to do with autism in general, it always, if it, if it speaks about gender, it's always binary. I know that a lot of autistic trans people find it very difficult to be taken seriously. I have not had any personal experiences there, but I know that people who have to, who want to transition can find it very difficult because they're autistic. I think that by and large, we just need to have this conversation about gender more in society in general, because service providers and support workers may not have had the gender conversation, even if they know about autism. I'm starting to see like with the Autistic Women's Network, they've recently, just this month actually in July, uh, changed their name to include non-binary people and on their site they say that this will ensure that non-binary and trans people both feel comfortable to join the network and, and use their services, et cetera, et cetera. And that's great to see. You know, I think that that's great that the differing criteria that how autism can present differently is being seen, but what I'd like to see more is a shift that men can present that way as well. Um, trans people, non-binary people. Just being part of like a, a part of the Sisterhood of Women, um, Autistic Women Australia, sorry, Sisterhood of Autistic Women Australia. And we have fantastic discussions on there and it's a really inclusive group of women, which it, it's regardless of your gender identity. If you fall into the category and self-identify as woman, you can join this group. Um, and then all of a sudden you have people ask questions again about gender identity and it'll, it starts to sort of become unclear. Um, and people start to self-define and, and start saying they need to cover a territory where gender non-binary non is a hugely important identity. But I don't relate to it personally because mm. I don't understand why being a woman or being female has to be a preconceived notion. What are your experiences or journeys when it comes to discovering your identity? Oh, that's a bit of a big one. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I was always interested in gender differences. When I was growing up, um, it was when Boy George was in the chart. And I, I, somehow, I wouldn't have really described myself as a tomboy because I, I, I can't stand science fiction. I can't stand sport. I'm not really interested in boys' stuff at all. But I'm not really interested in typical girls' stuff either. Yeah. So. I'm somewhere in the middle. I didn't come out as non-binary until a couple of years ago. So it was really when I was um, you know, researching autism stuff that I read about autism and gender. And I read that a lot of autistic women are somewhere between the genders. And I thought, oh, yes, that's me. For ages, when I was a kid and a teen and such, I thought I was just rubbish at being a girl. I didn't even feel like a tomboy. My body felt weird a lot of the time until I got to the point where I kind of accepted that I'm not actually one thing or the other. I think for like a really long time I just said I was like a tomboy because again where I'm from I like we don't really have the concept of non-binary at all and then like even when I learned that non-binary is a thing I think for a long while like it's one of those things where like oh I couldn't be that because like, again I'm not this and that and the other thing and always like feeling like I'm not allowed to be that thing. I remember being like really anxious to come out to any of my friends, even my friends who were trans or friends who were non-binary. And then actually, because most of my friends are really queer, it went um, a lot more easily. 
Yeah, I don't know. Like, there was a, a very long time of being like, is this non-binary gender feelings or is this internalized misogyny? Like, am I actually feeling like I am non-binary or am I just working off of a concept of what being a woman means? Well, when I was younger, I really liked a lot of things that boys liked as far as, I mean, all the way up until, say, late middle school, really, I was mostly hanging out with a lot of boys. Uh, I just felt more comfortable. Generally, before then, a lot of my female friends were very toxic. And, and so it was very it was very interesting to sort of look back and be sort of confused as far as friendships go. But then that sort of carries over into my identity as well. Just sort of feeling more toward the masculine side, but then being unsure you know, girls around me that I just didn't feel like I related to and I was really confused, but then sort of had my moments of femininity. My senior year, I was in a musical and I played a male character. And I, I, it's funny, it wasn't until I really looked back at that that I was like, ah, now I understand why it felt so good. And, but you know, yet I didn't like want to necessarily be a boy. It's it's like this fluid thing. I don't feel like I'm a boy. I don't feel like I'm a girl, you know. Um, so then I went to Japan and I discovered Takarazuka, the all all female cast that performs as as uh, men and women on stage, and that was really eye opening. And then uh, recently I realized that you know you don't have to choose one side or the other. You don't have to feel like you're one side or the other, or anything in between or you know whatever and so I've realized that I'm non-binary uh very gender fluid and that I fluctuate yeah I, I mean when I was in high school actually and when I hit puberty I actually was wearing like boys clothing a lot uh to school I would wear the bigger baggy pants I would wear the men's like muscle shirts and I dressed in a more masculine way for a really long time and uh, it's just interesting because there's been that like change and transformation to my life and just even now the way I feel about you know my own gender identity I'm just like I don't really feel that I need to conform it to what anyone thinks it should be I guess and I've gotten more confidence in that because some days I may just feel more you know like I just don't want to be girly today I don't feel girly you know and then I'm just not going to dress that way or I'm not going to put on all the makeup I just you know and it, it's kind of fluid and I, I just am very accepting I guess of that now and I'm like it's nobody's business how I feel. Well I was pretty uh, well I was raised a feminist I suppose in terms of um, being in touch with the notion of gender because my mum and dad split when I was really young. My dad came out as gay. Uh, my mum worked in a women's refuge after a while. Well she worked in a theatre company first you know and so as kids after school and if we were sick we were hanging out in a theatre company. And my mum made costumes and costumed people. So theatre companies are full of like gay guys and lesbians and non-traditional performing people. So there was never, a, it was just something that was ever questioned. You know, it just was just all, everybody was always different. And there was all sorts of bodies and all sorts of races and all sorts of expressions of gender. And I never really had a sense of needing to be traditional in any gender sense. I was absolutely a tomboy from when I was really little. Um, and so that never seemed less female to me. My sister is a total princess, complete princess. And I just thought she was weird, but I never, it was never, she was more of a girl than I was a girl. I just wasn't at all interested in the way that she obviously used her feminine powers of influence, even from when she was quite young. Traits related to my autism played a part in my marriage breaking down about 10 years ago. So that kind of prompted me to take it more seriously. Eventually I went and sought a formal assessment. At that time it sort of didn't make that much difference to my life because I, I had, you know, grown to understand that I was on the spectrum and I'd already been thinking a lot about autism for years because my mum works on it and stuff. But then getting together with my partner, Sonny, and then realising after a while that they're autistic too, which I sort of realised first. Prompted a lot of reflection and soul searching and like seeking to understand this and suddenly went through the whole kind of reframing process. The combination of that with 
actively getting engaged with the autistic community and meeting more autistic people and going to Autscape led to autism being a much bigger part of my identity. Discovering that I'm autistic was a catalyst in many ways for me in discovering other parts of my identity because it made me realise that I was not really being myself in a lot of ways. I was worrying too much about what other people thought. I wanted to be a, a boy when I was very young and I really didn't want to develop into a girl. I was, it, it was a very, very difficult time. Eventually it got to a point when I realised that I didn't really like what society was saying about masculinity either. I was conforming to a lot of that. Um, I was sort of hiding my emotions and saying, no, I'm too tough to cry and refusing to wear anything that was even slightly girly, even if it was like a dress that would have been nice to wear in summer because it was hot. Kind of discovering the idea of being non-binary was brilliant for me because it described my experience perfectly of not really think, feeling that either binary option applied to me very well. And I've always been at best ambivalent about gender. A part of that is uh, an active dislike of masculinity in general. Most of the things associated with masculinity mess you up or they mess up other people. You know, aggression, um, competitiveness. Yeah, trying to be self-contained while sort of quietly relying on other people all the time. Yeah, I've never exactly identified as not male, but I've never really identified with anything about maleness. So I think recent years have not profoundly changed the way that I think about my own gender, but have led me to at least kind of go out of my way to de-emphasise maleness, really. Um, and I was pleased when Facebook implemented the ability to choose your preferred pronouns and uh, immediately switched mine to they. Another issue is in the validity of autism and gender. A society still believes in the stereotypes. Do we still believe that autistics cannot think for themselves? Or do we only listen to advice because they are influenced or told? Autistics suffer gender dysphoria as much as any neurotypical person. But what are the differences in their behaviour and attitudes towards the gender norms? They're already at a disadvantage there. But as soon as you put um, autism into the mix, it gives, uh, I think it gives like parents and stuff more of a valid reason other than, oh, you're just young. Because now they can go, oh, you're just young and you're autistic. So, you know, you, it might, it might be nothing. You might be being silly or whatever. But yeah, I've been, I've, you know, I've heard of quite a lot of autistic people being turned away from gender clinics or support regender, um, basically because our our ideas are dismissed because we're autistic and therefore probably wrong, which of course happens in all sorts of fields. Autistic people can be viewed as immature or just like Peter Pan and never growing up and naive, so people might just think that we could never possibly know anything properly. Yeah, and I also I was reading an article the other day about kids, trans, some trans, kids, some autistic kids are being given, um, they're like, they, they, they um, come out as trans in their teens and nobody's really um, questioning them deeply about it and they're just putting them on puberty blockers, but actually they really need proper counselling and stuff before they go on anything that could harm their health or anything that could be potentially um, has an implication for the rest of their life. Oh, I think it goes back to um, what I've seen of trans experiences again. Um, you know, because you have a diagnosed, quote, problem, everything is attributed to the supposed problem rather than just being a thing that happens to be your identity. Um. I find it really hard to make generalised statements about anything, whether that's a, a gender question or an autistic question. Yeah. I think we're really actually, it's a really diverse, actually diverse experience and diverse community. I think um, it has a really lot to do with how your autism impacts on you as well. I mean, some of us, I mean, I'm, obviously I'm very verbal and I have a lot more of independence. Um, I get to make the decisions about myself and my identity. I think there are a lot of people who have co-diagnoses, co words I'm getting all wrong, but you know they have concurrent diagnoses that 
impact them greatly and so autism might be really significant to how they think in their identity but in addition to that they have other barriers that mean they don't have a lot of independence or say at all about their gender and those people especially are just I think definitely considered asexual but also not a person of status to actually have their gender identity considered and that does not mean in any way that they are not impacted just as severely as everybody else by stereotypes around gender. There's a lot written about autism as being, you know, autistic people not being age appropriate or gender appropriate or socially appropriate. But in most of these cases, it's like they're not actually problems. They're culturally defined. And I think, you know, that's maybe the context to look at it in when you say, well, actually, what is age appropriate? You also start saying, well, what's gender appropriate? Talk about it. Both gender and autism are flexible and change is super scary but it can happen and it doesn't invalidate any of the feelings or thoughts. It's fine to be whatever identity you feel and don't let people say to you that because you're autistic you, you can't be a different gender to what you were born in or uh, your feelings are absolutely valid. I think it's worth thinking about what societal expectations there are and which ones are really worth bothering about. And by worth, I mean, is it a danger to your safety? And is it a crowd that you want to be part of? But it's worth experimenting with. You know, there's no reason to make yourself conform to things that make you uncomfortable when you don't have to. Like, I think the biggest thing that I wish other people had told me is that, like, you're allowed to exper experiment, you're allowed to change your mind. If you think a thing would make you more comfortable, just go for it. Know that you are valid, um, no matter how you feel, and you don't have to have it all figured out. So it's, it's, it's all sort of a journey, and it doesn't have to all happen at once, and it probably won't ever happen all at once. It's kind of a lifelong journey to figure out sort of how you feel inside. You do you, and you be you, and it's okay if you don't know who that is yet. Are someone who knows somebody who's transitioning or who's questioning, um, just remember that they need to re really appreciate your support and your respect and that will make a big difference. It's not that hard to do. Be true to yourself. I think you need to realise that all gender is performative. Try and be yourself as best you can and not fear what other people think as best you can but also to go and find out as much about yourself and other people as well, because it's only through self-discovery and it's only through learning about other people's journeys that you really truly learn about yourself. You've got to find your own path for all of this, and but you do that by help with other people. It can be helpful, you know, to identify with a label, but at the same time, it's more about who you are with yourself and being honest with yourself and knowing what your experience is. And you know, even if you, meet other people who fall within the label you identify with, uh, you may not necessarily identify with those people. So I think, you know, build on your own identity so that you really, you know, have the confidence in your own identity, even when it doesn't match everyone else who's, you know, in, in the labels you identify with, <laughs> so that you feel strong enough in who you are as a person. <laughs> as all of this information comes full circle, I have now learned more on the issues surrounding gender identity and autism. From looking into what research has been proposed to the experiences from autistic people, autistic people and gender studies have given me more insight on gender identity that can promote more neurodiversity. Like neurotypicals, we have different ways of thinking, but we suffer similar issues in our day-to-day -day lives, such as exploring our identities. Looking into autism and gender identity can be a challenge. I believe that investigating the two will encourage more awareness into neurodiversity. People with different mindsets should be lessened when it comes to discovering their gender identity. The final question is, do I believe there is a connection between autism and gender? I do think there are some connections, particularly neurological. It could be possible that it is similar to how autistics can more likely have anxiety or hypermobility. However, those traits as well as gender isn't exclusive to autistics. For the exposure of autism and gender identity, the journey is just beginning. My name is Sarah and last November uh, 2017 I was diagnosed, late, very late diagnosed um, ASD and I identify as non-binary or genderqueer.
My name is Nyx. I was diagnosed with Asperger's Syndrome in 2015, um, but I prefer the term autistic. My gender identity is non-binary. My name is Krista Holmans. Uh, I run the Neurodivergent Rebel blog. I was formally diagnosed autistic at the age of 29. Uh, I'm a woman, but I've always kind of been more of a tomboy. I'm Freya Pini. Um, I'm diagnosed autistic by a clinical psychologist. Oh, I identify as female. My name's Jeanette Perkis. I'm an autistic advocate, author, public speaker. Identity is as a, a person, but as a non-binary gender person. My name is Kieran Rose. I'm autistic. I was diagnosed Asperger's in 2003, and I'm cis, heterosexual. Right, my name's Madge. I'm, I'm 47 years old. I was diagnosed two and a half years ago, age 44, um, with Asperger's. Gender identity is non-binary. My name's Petra. I am yeah, autistic and I identify mostly as gender queer. I'm Sonny. Uh, I am autistic. I was diagnosed um, in my late 20s and I identify as non-binary. So I'm Fergus Murray. I learned I was autistic about nine years ago now, I guess. Eight or nine years. I find it hard to pin down my gender identity. My name is Rachel of Only Photography. I am autistic and I identify myself as cisgender but also unsure.